Hello, my name is Deanne Treasure Kellogg. I am an artist, writer, illustrator, working on being a marketer as well. And today I have a story I'd like to share with you. Um, one I wrote last year. Hope you enjoy it. Happy days. I have an extensive lineage steeped in accomplished musical aptitude, so it is no wonder at my magnificent skills with the arts. My mother is in fact the famed Koromoni. Never mind that she is most famous throughout the land for being the courtesan of courtesans, she also has a lovely voice. That is how she met my father, in fact. Back then, my mother went by her birth name, Ilana Kalua. She performs with my father, a well-known composer and musician, Frederick Cross. They get on right away. Of course, everyone gets on with Koromomi or Ilana Kalua. She is not just an exquisite beauty but is exceptionally versed in all manners of topics with stroking egos as her preeminent. Unfortunately, her charm can't hold my father. My happy days are over. He abandons us after four years. We suffer terrible emotional distress as a result. It is rumored that he abandons everyone within a year or two. My mother is the longest by far, though that does not help the detachment of affections that I endure. I am told that I have upwards of 40 half-siblings around the globe as that deadbeat debonair father of mine travels. To further do injury, my dearest mother goes from being doting to absent. She changes her name to Cora and takes to touring with ample carousing causing a stir wherever she goes. Many men she calls protectors support her spending until she acquires ample homes in many cities. I hardly ever see her and to further damage, my psyche no one outside of our city seems to know she even has a son. I hear she keeps dogs and horses instead. My humility is sacrificed by the hostile design of it all. But alas, my charitable Aunt Palila takes me in before my fragile heart recedes from the influx of detachments. She has no children of her own. Her love enables me to conduct myself with solemnity. After all, the denizens adore the Kalua family. Aunt Palila lives out in the rugged countryside with her husband Boland Cleary, a simple carpenter. He is a robust man with a bushy beard. Inwardly he brawls. I find this off-putting straight away. Aunt Palila you see sings at the taverns in the city when she isn't making lavish hats. Her business is booming and she is contemplating expanding to dresses. Many designs resemble the hummingbirds she feeds on the grounds of her property. However, Rumors flourish about her and her private relations and Uncle Boland is brooding too intent upon it. Everyone knows that the Kalua family is a friendly one. They all adore us for our loving nature. I suppose Boland's ego is too juvenile. He is not so profitable and his thoughts revolve around Polila's wealth and her flock of admirers. Jealousy is a wicked beast you know. My happy days with Aunt Polila come to a crashing end after she takes fever one winter. Boland not used to Palila in a frail state falls off the deep end spouting nonsense about a changeling taking over her body. I'll get you back Palila. Don't worry I will save you. I hear him say. This by far is my most traumatizing experience. I am 15 and trembling with indecision. With celerity, Grandpa Lonnie gets word while out teaching the liar to some of the locals. He along with the rest of the Kaluas and most of the town's folk including the priest respond with readiness but Polila's house is many miles to traverse. Meanwhile Boland bars the doors. When he grabs the oil, I know with certainty that it is up to me to save my beloved Aunt Mother Palila. I convince him to give me the oil fearing the grossest harm for us all. In the circumstance, my mind is conflicted with disorder and I feebly determine to hide it in the cellar. Boland keen to my intention simply locks the door with me within. My heart freezes in my chest hearing the click. I fall upon the wood with convulsions as disquietude besets me. I am useless. I fail my dearest Palila. Amid my misery, I listen with profound silence for the conclusion. He makes long excursions within the interior. Ululates then shrieks reach my ears in a sudden gale force. The waiting becomes laborious. When Uncle Boland opens the door his aspect is forlorn and his words are kindly. Surely, he has abandoned reason and his influence upon me is pernicious. For my own benefit, I feign ignorance of the murder. He takes me to what he claims is a fairy circle and there we are to wait for them to return Palila. 
I am all too relieved when Grandpa Lonnie and the others arrive. I am not sure what transpires after though as I am led away promptly. I certainly do not hear of or see Boland again. It is as they all conspire for sweetest Palila. My glamorous mother arrives shortly after to attend her only sibling's funeral. Again, my heightened sense of existence is stained by her neglect. Her trove of wealthy lovers has never entered into introductions with me, and only with brevity does she explain that I am to go to boarding school to escape the horrible memory with new fresh scenery. Nothing will ever erase my failure to protect my dearest Palila, my son on a cloudy day. I will never forget her sweet lullabies. I start my new life with a trunk of fancy clothes, books, and gold. My mother can't spare the time, but she does spare the coin at least. I am amid boys my age all there with similar aspirations, to gain a proper gentleman's education. Here I introduce myself as Hani Kalua having no desire to be associated with either of my parents at this point. I find myself making more friends than high marks. One of my generous instructors, Dame Zinnia, is concerned seeing through my troubled facade and attempts to reach me. I am a tender dashed boy after all. I quickly discern the power of words when her shiny eyes spread over me. Via her, I learn a great deal about love and relations though none of it sanctioned officially. When we are discovered in bed it is deemed scandalous. She is fired straight away. I am left undisciplined until two years later when I am discovered with another voluptuous Dame Napua. Having poor grades and two counts of fraternizing with instructors against me, I am cast out. My happy days here are at an end. Part of me is proud. It is in my blood to woo with words. My parents do this after all. Yet the other part is ashamed though I don't fully understand why. Ultimately, I don't go home, at least not immediately. I strike out on my own testing my skills as both a musician and lover. I am a sensation and drink heavily winning favors from beautiful women wherever I go. I push forward in service of glimmer seeking the richest of all physical luxuries with no degree of satisfaction developing an intolerable thirst. Upon occasions, I connect ideas, but mostly my conceptions in life are in a state of indistinctness and confusion. By slow degrees at length my happy days are coming to an end as I find myself supine, broke with small remnants of self-worth. I am a boy pariah after all. Grandpa Lonnie and Grandma Lunana greets me graciously but they are getting on in years and I can't allow myself to take advantage of their good nature. It is nice for a spell to play and sing as we once did, but I am the son of the great Koromomi and Frederick Cross even if only the people here know it. I am destined to do great things. For this, I am certain. Besides, I can't stay here. Everything reminds me of my dearest Palila. My nightmares of that winter, my faulty decisions are worse here. I must make amends. I must find my own niche in life. I must find happiness, be the star that you wish upon. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Um... You liked my voice? <laughs> All right. I'm pretty sure you know that wasn't me. Um, I haven't had any kind of voice acting or practiced uh, altering my voice in any kind of way. So I'd probably suck at it. Um, well, I haven't had any practice at doing videos either. And um, I'm working on that. So maybe um, later on, I'll be very good at this. Um, so I just thought that being a male, honey needed a male voice. Um, I hope that you find some commonalities with uh, some of the stories and some of the characters. Uh, let me know in the comments um, if you have any suggestions, uh, tips, improvements, or whatnot. Um, I'd be appreciative of those too. But thank you very much for watching. Have a blessed day.